In this week's episodes, first is fever. Martha tries to bury the past and gets her and Clark sick. Lex's doctor girlfriend is on call, and Chloe pours her heart out. Then in Rosetta, it's Superman meets Superman, and it means hope. This is the Smallville Chronicles. Hello, everybody. You're listening to Smallville Chronicles. I'm Luke Gonzalez, joined as always by the brainiac of our podcast, Alan Muir. I have a beard. <laughs> and we have our special guest uh, returning. We got you to watch better episodes this time and not Aquaman. <laughs> Cam. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for having me on your uh, illustrious recording software. Yes, we, we try to improve and grow and do better things. <laughs> It already feels better. Yes. Um, so we watched a pair of episodes, kind of the latter part of season two. The first fever is okay. It's a pretty good episode. It has like huge kind of ramifications. World yeah, world building and ramifications down the line. I know it we're both to a lot for sure. Just there's like the story itself like as you'll see through the next episode it doesn't really get brought up but it is there is a lot to be had in this episode yeah so i guess it's the easiest thing to start off with is the kind of setup for everything is that earlier in the season i don't remember exactly how but martha ended up with the octagonal disc she had hidden a can of flour i can actually <clears throat> I can actually recount the. I remember everything from. Okay, yeah. Or how she got it. It was the episode where Lionel was still faking or was still blind. And the. It was when Lex found out that Lionel bugged his off his ma the mansion. Oh, he yes. Had, when when they got. He had the octagonal disc in the vault. Yeah, the episode with Yao Fei from Arrow. Yeah. Uh, also, he was Ryu in Street Fighter, the one with Raul Julia. He flip his head upside down. Is it that one? <laughs> uh, oh, no, he just got shot real quick. But he's like one of those character actors that's been in everything. And he was in season one of Arrow for like a long time. He, he was. He was Arrow's one. Yoda, kind of. That's some blind guy who like abuses arrow. Wait, that's Daredevil. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's stick. Yes. Oh, this is completely off topic, or sort of off, sort of in topic. In, in topic, in universe. I was watching uh, Castle Rock. Right. And Terry O'Quinn, aka Locke from Lost. Oh. He mentioned that in a letter read by Stick. I'm blanking on the actor's name. Uh, oh, from the TV, from the Daredevil TV show. Yeah. Oh, I don't remember his name. I want to say it's Sky Eastwood. Drive. I think it's Clint Eastwood. <laughs> oh man, that'd be no. It's that'd um, be interesting. <laughs> but yes Scott so, insert last name here mm -hmm. his character on the show is sort of like stick or he's like the defender uh, basically the defender of like the area, like of the of the county, is he still blind? No, but he he acts like he's sort of doing the uh, the Charlie Cox thing where he doesn't try to he tries not to look at people. I think that's just called social anxiety. 
Oh, the actor's name is Scott Scott Glenn. Scott Glenn. Yeah, that's right. But I, as soon as the episode ended, I just said, I just said out loud, "Are you seriously rebuilding the chest?" Oh, and in and, and Stephen King universe, Scott Glenn. That is a deep cut into Marvel comic book lore. Because they don't even touch on that, even in the Daredevil TV show. The, <laughs> ch- the is it chest or chase is like the opposite of the hand. They're the they're, two opposing. They're good, yeah, they're forces. good ninjas. <laughs> they're the good. The hand is the bad. And they're neither of them are the foot and, who bother, and, bother the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And the bird is the word. Yes. I understood that reference. Uh, so to get back to the episode, though, so basically. <laughs> uh, Martha takes the key. She buries it in the storm cellar, which is where the ship is. As she digs her hole, uh, there's some green spores. Obviously, that's bad, bad stuff. She gets sick when she goes back inside and collapses. Uh, drops her lemonade. They bring her to the hospital. She's basically dying. And then the doctor, who is Lex's girlfriend, reveals that, uh, that Martha is actually pregnant. As yeah, well. yeah, that's affecting her and baby. And Jonathan is just like, "What?" Yeah, it's something what, that they. What the hell are you talking about, woman? Yeah, they hinted at it. That at was the, a, that was a Fantastic Four reference. Yeah, it was hinted at like I think earlier this season when the episode with Ryan. Uh, yeah, it was yeah, Clark's like psychic little buddy that ends up dying. No, his little brother. His his. Honorary brother. brother. Yes. So Martha is sick. Um, she's in the hospital. They don't really know what to do. Um, she was going to be throwing some sort of thing. So Clark goes, Jonathan makes Clark go do stuff. I do have a question about that. Cause like they just talk about this party as if it's like already been led up to it. It's like supposed to be like no, a big it, thing. It just came out of nowhere. This is not, there has been no lead into this party. Because they also like, there's maybe five minutes total at this party, and it's like, all right, I guess that was important. Yeah, no, all the important stuff is the ship and Clark being sick and doc and the doctor. Yeah. So Lex visits the doctor, his girlfriend. Uh, she's given offered a position to John Hopkins. He basically encourages her. Then the disease control come in and they basically are going to search the farm. Clark has to rush to move the the ship. And while he's doing that, he inhales some spores. And Which like, he, I guess is just kryptonite. I mean, like they're insinuating it by it being green, right? Yeah, it's like one of the tropes of like the early seasons of the show when everything's like the meteor freaks mm-hmm. is that anything that the meteors touch turn green and they just make them like super so it's like super spores. But it's not like technically kryptonite. No, that's why like Martha's affected too. And that's why they're able to just like clean them up. Because like in other episodes, there's like super plants. And that's the Amy Adams episode. I'm trying to remember who else gets affected by the like, kryptonite. They're like uh, Lizzie Kaplan. Oh yeah, well, they're, they're, yeah, people get affected by it when they're doing stuff, and then uh, the guy from the from the second episode. Oh yeah, they like spray like uh, Luther Corp was like spraying stuff, and like the stuff they were spraying had meteorite rock, and that affects people. Just being a, anything that's around meteor rock slash kryptonite gets basically turned into like a weird meta version of itself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I was, uh, I was actually talking about the bug guy. Uh, oh, you talking about the Arkin. bug guy? Oh, yeah. I was talking about the um, Tony Todd. Tony Todd. But it's the same difference. They're all media freaks. They go up on the wall of weird. Yeah, um, along with Pee Wee Herman and everybody else. Mm-hmm. So on the way back of trying to get rid of the ship, uh, Clark is driving, actually passes out, and they crash the truck. They end up getting it out. The Clark loses his strength for a moment. Uh, Pete just decides to drive. Clark tells his dad about it and tells him not to worry. And then they discover the 
seize control, discovers the flower can with the thing with the disc in it and questions Jonathan. And so now they are worried. Um, they're going to find something. And then uh, they're going to take him away or something. Yeah. And then I believe this is where, so Jonathan and Clark have like a good talk here about why Martha would hide the disc. And Jonathan's like, I don't know. And then he, they ha- he said that he's more, he's, he, he, well, which came first? The, the thing about the family talk thing that Jonathan later says, or mm-hmm. Clark mentioning that, what mentioning what happened to him. I think like, wasn't the second episode, the one where like he wakes up in weird yeah. places. Yeah, no, no, that's yeah. I think no, no, in I'm, this one, the it's a very short conversation they have when the CDC. No, no, I'm, t- I'm, t- I'm just simply talking about Clark telling Jonathan that what happened to him when him and Pete on the road. Uh, I think it is here. He tells him, and he tells him not to worry about it. Then he's like, "Of course I worry about it. Like you're my son." And then I believe it's here they cut to the hospital, and then we have Jonathan talking to Martha, who's like kind of in and out of it. And then he asks her like how she got pregnant. And she says during the night of the tornado that there was a surge from the ship when the disc went in it and that she thinks that it healed her body. And then he also asked her about why she hid the disc. And she said that she was afraid that Clark would learn about his origins and want to leave them. Which I think was like a great way to like explain her motives. And I think it leads into a lot of the stuff in the next episode as well. With like Clark's feelings towards his parents and their feelings toward him and his origins. There was like again, and like in the second episode, there was a good like moment where he like is it's like I still love you, you're still my parents, but like he needs yeah. to find it's out. Like, it's like if you remove the alien aspect, like you would still see this conversation and these emotions in a normal like adoption. Yeah. Like if the kid was trying to find like their birth parents. <laughs> not that this is like you know weirdly gross but it's just like the whole thing of like i thought she could never have kids because like we just like do it all the time regardless and like don't really uh, worry about it yeah i think i can't remember what season now i'm sure you know there is like a flashback and then when they visit the other earth way late i think that's like season 10 you get to learn like that the reason like they like one of the reasons, like they like they she physically couldn't have children. Like she's, yeah, it was a medical thing. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's why I think it's kind of always been that in the comics that they've never, they never. I don't well, know. I don't think they ever said which one of them couldn't, but they well, always could not have kids. This is mainly a takeoff, or this is a, since Superman was first created in the. 30s there's been numerous retcons changes to the continuity so i think what they were doing was making their own continuity i mean like the show itself is totally has its own continuity like just oh yeah the way they introduce characters in general is just like not you know congruent with any version of the comics it is in some respects but totally not yeah like pete pete was a character that was in the comics like way early on the idea of lex and clark being friends was like an idea way early on but like i think in the comics i feel like the kents originally were much older they were um so like but they also never had kids and it was either never addressed and then when they finally did address it it was that they couldn't have kids yeah, well, Which I guess, it's, yeah, it's like a comic book thing because if you think of like the Parkers, like Spider Man's, like, uh, oh, I May- thought you were talking about the hit UPN show. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, like, Aunt, like Aunt May and Uncle Ben never had kids either, so maybe that was like a comic book trope of the time, which is also just like a trope with movieifying or TVifying comic books is that like they're de aging the parents, like in Spider Man Homecoming, like. Aunt May is it, like it, maybe it's, 40. It's always, 
it's always been weird that Aunt May is an old lady and Peter's in high school. Like, how yeah. old was his parents? <laughs> <laughs> like, it never made sense. Like, yeah, um, also, especially just like your your grandparents technically have to be like really old for that to even be like how that would yeah, work. They do the same thing in the comics with like Batman and the Robins. Like at this point, Bruce is like I don't even know, like six years older than Tim Drake. I mean, than um Dick Grayson. Yeah, like Batman's in his thirties. Dick is in his like late, like in his mid twenties. Well, Jason's... keep in mind you're basing this off New Fifty Two stuff. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, yeah, but that's been like the last what, like seven years into Rebirth. So like, uh, New, two... New Fifty Two lasted about five and a half years. Yeah, we're like into two years into Rebirth, so it's been about seven years. And but they, they do actually... it all the time. They kind of fix the ages. They did do Secret Origin. Like I don't know if you guys remember the series Secret Origins. Remember the Superman one? No, no. Think... Um, there was actually a. It was. It was actually just a simple, like we're gonna give you re re like origins secret the seat the secret origins of three characters. I think I might have read it a while ago. They did them. The series didn't last that long, or it it actually ran like I think a couple of volumes in the span of two to four years. This was this like the Superman this, Earth One stuff, or was that like something else? No, this was. I think them. I think DC trying to retell, or fix, or try, fix continuity in New Fifty Two. So there's one that there's one for uh, John Constantine. Because in like the Hellblazer books, he, when he 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 doesn't age throughout that entire series, right? No, no, he he ages. He 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 starts out as a very young man into an old, very old man at the end. Okay. But the the DC stuff, certain things remain constant. Like his mother died. When he was, or his mother died in childbirth. Mm. Oh, and his father like beat the shit out of him. Was a drunk. Yeah, and in the Vertigo stuff, it was revealed that he actually killed his. He, his mother actually had was carrying twins, and he literally strangled. Uh, oh, his, his, strangled his twin in the womb. Oh, it's, yeah. Thanks, Constantine. <laughs> it's just yeah. playing off the thing that his bad things happen to those closest to him. Yeah, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but there was they did. See, like origins, new origin stories for the Robins. Mm. Oh yeah, that I remember because I remember reading the Jason Todd one. Yeah, where, um, as he beat the crap out of like some of the Red Hood guys, and then what's her name? Um, Talia sees him, right? Yeah, which was kind of creepy because I think he's supposed to be like thirteen, and she's like eyeballing him. Oh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the one they did for Tim Drake, he he was never officially Robin. Oh yeah, I remember that. That was so dumb. He was Red Robin. Red Robin yeah, that yeah. that because yeah, was, did you say that, Cam? I did say Red Robin, which was a good series. I no, read. No, like I, the... I thought I wasn't sure if you said Yum. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, I was. I was not, my humor switch was turned off for a moment. <laughs> I have to get a dad joke in there every once in a while. Sure. But yeah, obviously the Robins are kind of fucked now. But, you know, uh, ECA shows up to like fuck up the farm. They figure out that like, oh yeah, 
this little patch of sod inside, which also, I don't know much about, you know, storm cellars, but are they just like dirt floors? Uh, I think in the middle of Kansas on a farm, they might be. Guess. Because it's not like, it's like a, it's only like, it's not like a basement. It's like, there's a tornado getting the storm cellar. Still like, you know, they're like, oh, I got some peaches, which is, that was like the most old timey thing ever through this whole episode. Yeah. I'm going to make some peaches for dessert tonight. I'm like there oh, was okay. okay. The only other storm cellar scene where, where it depicts something like that is, or was the preacher pilot? Oh yeah, man. Preacher where Tulip is being is on, on the run and she MacGyver's a bazooka. Oh yeah, that's right. And she tells the kids to stay in the storm cellar. That show's still on. Yeah, it's still on. Yep. Okay. Season three finished like in the f- summer. In yeah. The summer. All right. Well, but um, to get back, so yeah, after the disease control clear everything out, Lana visits Clark and he's just kind of on his porch looking for Lauren. She says like two things and then Clark just falls down the steps and collapses. Like the most comically way. He like oh, falls yeah. like, the, the right on his head. <laughs> It's a perfect pratfall. Like it's very trivia chase. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was uh, just like that person would be dead, like in real oh, life. He, he like smashes his head on the ground. It was like so... he, also mess, he also messes up his back. Or he would have also messed up his back big time. Oh yeah. It's like three steps. He like throws himself down those steps. Uh but Jonathan calls Dr. Bryce. Then when she shows up, Jonathan's like, hey Lana, get the hell out. Yeah, he picks, her, picks her out of the house like <laughs> so abruptly, um, and then is basically like, "Hey, Doc, uh, you're gonna learn some things right here." And she's like, "We need to no, get no. to." He's like, uh, "Clark's very you. You can't do this. Clark's very special, or he's not. He's not t- a tip a regular. He's not like the re- a regular teenager. Yeah, it's a regular boy. Like, and he's he gets to the point where it says, <laughs> or where she says, "Is this some religious thing?" <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and he's like, no, you literally cannot do that. And, and then, like, he, actually, to, I can. Yeah, it's like, to, to his dismay. Well, to his amazement, more like, he's oh, just yeah. like, huh? Yeah, Hopefully she, he's not dead. But I did, like, as she's, like, leaving, he, like, does the whole, like, grabs her wrist, like, thing that they do in, like, TV shows and movies, like, all the time. Like, someone's leaving. It's usually, actually, a woman, too. When they're, like, turning to leave, and, like, someone just, like, grabs her wrist, like, you know, you'll know what I mean when you look at this other microphone. You do the test yourself. And she's yeah. like, okay, weird dad guy. Um, but she goes to the hospital and we cut to and she's just like, what the shit am I seeing? And Lex comes in and she kind of like hides the paperwork and is like, I can't tell you anything. Then we get yeah. Clark. Oh, Clark's passed out on the couch and Chloe shows up. And, and reads him a note. Yeah. It's a, a kind of a, note. Or it's a love note. Yeah, and it's long. Like it's a full page, like handwritten. A little and, and then basically as Clark is like And then she branded a, him. Oh god, that's terrible. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, they, they, they did she, not brand Ben in that cult. You never know. No, I listened. To, well, actually, it's the only podcast I ever got only through one episode, and I got too grossed out, and I had to delete it. Was is the, yeah, yeah. It's like uh, surviving Nexium, I believe it's called. No, no. Yeah, surviving or surviving or escaping. Yeah, one of them. Yeah, it was really like the branding thing was really graphic, and I was like, okay, I can't handle this. I can handle murder, but not that. It's kind of the most horrifying part of like any movie is like when somebody's like about to be stabbed with a hot coal or like a hot yeah. stick. Yeah, like I'm not a big like I can watch a horror movie. I don't like the kind of saw like torture stuff. Mm-hmm. I just find it like I don't know. It's just not something I'm into. Yeah, <laughs> you don't like people just being in pain for three hours. Yeah, the tr- the torture porn thing is just like not entertaining to me. I listened to about a half hour, then I just watched some. Uh, uh, f- some uh, three stooges. 
exactly what you need. Yeah, I needed to get away from all that. All right. Well, we're coming up to the end here. So basically, in his delirium, Clark mutters Lana, which basically crushes Chloe. And she uh. leaves. Uh, Jonathan, I believe, then he sees Clark. Clark's awake. And basically, this is when Jonathan goes like full Metal Gear Solid and is sneaking through a military base. Oh my God. I lo- fucking love this bit. It was, I was just like, okay, how shitty is this like, <laughs> this like base that they set up? That literally, like John Farmer is like busting in, like wire cutting a fence, and just like do do do. It was so. That's why, like I said, Metal Gear, Metal Gear saw like he's just like walking, stopping, wait, exclamation point, oh, he's back to question mark. Let's go some more. <laughs> you can be surprised at how they de- how stupid they depict uh, military and yeah. Like I, and, like and my wife works for the government, fantasy. and knows like she doesn't work for the CDC, but she works for like. There's so much security, like, and that's just like in a office building. Have either of you seen uh, season one? I think it was the finale of Fear of the Walking Dead. No, yes. I'm not a Walking Dead person. I saw it like when it was out, but that was like four years ago, I think. Well, one of the characters who has no real, no real. Training. Hmm. Oh, was it like the the kid who like brings a knife to school? No, I'm talking about uh, the old man. Hmm. Mm-hmm. The old Latin man. Yes. Who? Who says? So he wise cracks to the guard to the someone who, to like a guard who tells him to go away, and he says, "Okay, I'll go away." He leaves. And then, and a swarm of zombies that are very slow. <laughs> that can be taken down. That can be kneecapped. Er. And reduced to crawlers. <laughs> they, they just get, the military just gets decimated. Yeah, because they only have like machine guns and humpies and tanks. Yeah. You know, uh, which speaking of which, so Jonathan evades everybody but one guy and who, runs, who gets cracked, like knocked out and probably gets CT. Yeah, that's our running joke now is that see how many people, especially the main cast, get concussions. So far, I think Pete's leading because Pete gets like tossed around all the time, which again, he got his head hit in this episode when Clark crashes the uh, the truck and he's bleeding from the forehead. He's like, oh, I'm fine. <laughs> Whatever. Like he literally gets. Is it the Lizzie Kaplan one where he literally gets like spiked into a locker and they? Oh like, my god, that was so fucking brutal. Yeah, he gets thrown into a locker and basically head first and gets his head like put through a locker, like a closed locker. <laughs> Jeez, uh, this, I'll have to yeah. find you a clip and send it because it is like the most ridiculous thing. It's pretty um, cringy. So while Jonathan Kent is like being solid snake, like he gets in that room and like tries to find the like the octagon. Then he's just like smashing shit. Oh on the my floor, god, that's like what I was thinking. He's bags. he was making so much noise. Yeah, he's like, oh, I'm just gonna be super sneaky and then just like drop all these like gallon bags of whatever. Oh my useless house shit. <laughs> yeah, that's not what I need for my son. I don't. Who cares about it? Like, yep. And then basically, when he gets found out, Clark shows up. Cracks the guy. Then basically Clark is now sick again. They kind of hustle each other out. And then the military is chasing a truck. And hey, it's Pete. They pulled over. And Jonathan and Clark somehow switched vehicles. They put the disc in. Jonathan holds Clark up to the ship. The ship explodes with light. Heals Clark. And then Martha's died. Like she flatlines in the hospital. And then is dead. But then, uh, but the pulsing light, yeah. the blinding light, or the blinding light God's just makes light. your heartbeat come back. Yeah. You know? That's what I was gonna make. It's a very Jesus like. She beats Jesus. She doesn't take her three days. It's like three minutes, and she's back from the light. And basically, everything is good. The entire hospital sees the light, and they're like, and they're just, well, like, that was weird. Oh, that was weird. Yeah, they move on. And it's like no back, one notices. That back, to, back to business. 
Yeah, no one notices that it came from Jonathan and the truck. It was yeah, a then regular they... old miracle, apparently. Yep, and then basically Martha has a full recovery, and then we see Lex is paying a doctor containing the uh, who gives him the files of Martha, and Helen visits Lex, and then he gives her a key to the mansion. And asks her to move with, with him and give up the John Hopkins fellowship. And she kisses him. And then we get the kind of ending annoying thing with Alana and Chloe and Clark showing up at the thing. And then Chloe basically like dumping her feelings on Lana. Uh, well, like Lana just like reads the letter and La- Lana's just like, oh shit. Yeah. Sorry, I guess. And like, yeah, that the weird party happens and Chloe's all like, well, blah, blah. I still like him, but I can't really say that. And yeah. she's like constantly looking back at Lano while they're just having a conversation. Yeah. yeah. And then we got we got to milk this for like four more seasons. Uh, yeah. And so we get rid of Lana and bring in a new love interest. We got to bring in a red haired lady. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, but that wraps up this first episode. It's a fine episode. It is a lot of groundwork and world building for things to come, including some stuff in the next episode as well as stuff multiple seasons down the line with that blood sample. About eight seasons down the line. Yep. <laughs> Does world building just mean like boring shit that happens for an episode? <laughs> they call back everything in this show. Like every little thing gets a callback. As I uh, earlier this week, I was just on a just watching old Smallville clips, and they meant they referenced something from season from like seasons either two, three, or four, all the way in season ten. Yeah, they just really gotta like they don't like maybe they're running out of ideas by that point they're like we just gotta we gotta bring something back just so like it makes sense yeah well that's what like going into this is a good way to segue into the next one the kawachi caves are basically like them being like oh we're not sure if we can ever use or have the money to make a fortress of solitude so the Uh, kawachi caves are like a pseudo fortress of solitude which originally in the pilot the uh the loft in oh the barn and the barn yeah. was the hit the closest they would get to a fortress of solitude even yeah. though everyone and their mother walks in yes dad and calls it the fortress mom. of solitude <laughs> <laughs> so cool all right so that was fever. I, I, I can just picture if john peters was still involved like hey could you put like could you have like a fight scene inside this barn where like Superman's guards or giant spiders or ra- have these people razzling uh, polar bears? Oh my god! Yeah, well, John Peters is a individual, a very dense individual and also very rich and also an ex-husband of barbara streisand he was yeah i thought he was her hairdresser he was both he was a hairdresser and then became a producer and produced a lot of famous movies like batman and wild 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 west West. (laughs) it's a wild wild west yes it's a very famous story if you ever listen to kevin smith talk about when he was writing Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Nick Cage, the one that ended up becoming the Nick Cage movie that never happened. John oh. Peters was the producer. Speaking of, wanted... uh, on Lou, do you still have? Did you like fully sub- subscribe to uh, DC Universe? Uh, yes. Have you been watching DC Daily at all? No, I have not. They actually did a reveal. That they were both they were waiting like twenty five days for. Is Nick Cage coming back? No, but it was well, actually the he actually did do the voice of Superman in the Lego Batman game, I think, right? Or the Lego Batman movie. 
That was a yeah. Wasn't that the the magician from Arrested Development, right? Oh no, yeah, Job. Job is Batman. Nicholas Cage is the voice of Superman in that movie. Right. But they actually revealed for the first time to the public what Nick Cage's Superman costume would have looked like or would have looked like. Okay. Well, there's a lot of the photos and there's actually a documentary on it, um, which is really good. I recommend anybody watching it called The Death of Superman Lives, What Happens. Yeah, it's really good. Recipe and... shot shot. Yeah, didn't the guy who made it just passed away like this year, right? Last year. Last year, okay. Well, 2018, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's 2019, bud. Uh, barely. <sighs> I know. All right. <laughs> but we can finally get into the better of the two episodes. Um, the episode that actually has a Superman. Um, yeah, they face face to face. Uh, so this is... Or as, as it was... T- as the title was of the YouTube video I saw, Clark talking to his past self. <laughs> or future self. But, um... No, no, they were they were saying they were doing it as if... Oh, okay, as if Christopher Reeves is talking to his younger yes. self? Yeah. So, yeah, this is the episode... Is it, I think this is the first episode. I think he appears in one more, right? Yes. Before he died? Spoilers Wikipedia says how many episodes he appears in. I think uh, two. Yeah, yeah two. just you two. <laughs> and I believe in the they were going to have him be in a third and then he passed away and they have Margot Kidder play his wife. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. Um, but yes, this episode is Rosetta, and we start off with Clark flying with the worst wire work I've ever seen. Yeah, and that was he's, like so bad. It was terrible. And basically he's having a dream about putting the key into the wall and then he wakes up in the middle of the street and randomly the car that's about to hit him is obviously Alexis Silver Porsche. Because of course that's who's out there in the middle of the morning. He's always driving. Just loves yeah. wasting gas. So Clark goes Luther home. Luther for president. Hey, he becomes president at the end of the series. And um, Clark goes home. His parents are like, what's going on? And he's like, I've been having these dreams. And I woke up in the middle of the road and Lex found me. And they're all like weirded out. And they basically like, no, we don't think you should put the key into the wall. And they kind of leave it there. Uh, Dr. Walden, who we were referring to last episode as Dr. McGlasses. Or Professor Glasses. Or Professor Glasses. Shows up at the mansion and Lex is who like. I just remembered was in the pilot for Eureka. Oh, he was that he was the guy who ended who was causing uh, who nearly destroyed the world. Oh, kind of like his character in this. I'll end up being. Yeah, so boilers. Mm hmm. So he goes to the mansion. Basically, he wanted to remove a piece of the wall. And this is how Lionel is kind of using kind of backdoor machinations to try to steal the custodianship from Lex away. Custodianship? Is yeah, that what they, they call his job working there? Uh, just like kind of, they, they don't own it, sure. but they're like protecting it. Curatorship. Yeah, well, it's more than that. They're kind of like have, own, like not ownership, but they're in charge of it. Yeah, they're not, they don't own it, but they have, but they're like the next best, they're the closest thing, but yeah, to, but not officially. Yes. Yeah, they're, they were been hired by the government to protect it and maintain it. Um, then we go to school. The kids have a project about their their family trees. And basically... Oh, yeah, this is a great scene. <laughs> I, I do think Pete, this is one of Pete's best lines in the series where he's like, sorry, I came from a nuclear family, guys. <laughs> just like kind of walks away. He's so always like, well, what if your mom just left you? And then Clark's like, what if you're adopted? And Lon's like, well, what if you're like found out you had a, like a dad? No, what if your biological father just recently came back into the picture <laughs> like whose family do you put in mean, he's just like uh, and he's just like okay i think i get the message bye and just walks out sorry i have all this privilege guys yeah i know although it is interesting and i kind of enjoyed the fact that like 
the one person who has like a normal nuclear family is the black character. Oh yeah. Uh, but this is kind of like what Warner Bros. like WB was and then CW was at the time. Like they were much, you know, like if you look at the group, you have Lana's Asian, he's black. Uh, there's two main girls in the show. I think it was we like can just, we can just quote that the the Flash Supergirl crossover from like three years ago. I don't even remember what they said. Or then. What uh, what's her name? What Cat Grant says about uh, James or Jimmy also, or James Kara uh, uh. Uh, Barry when how she says it. All of you standing there looking nonviolent. Okay. <laughs> or something looks that you look like the ca- the cast of a CW show. Oh my god! Yes, yes, that's exactly. Yeah, because it's like the Benetton ad that the Edward always jokes about. God, I I miss Cluster I think, but, on Supergirl. I loved her on that. I, but I think this kind of started with Buffy, where like they kind of did this type of thing. Um, but to get back to the actual episode. So Clark gets a weird noise in his ear. <laughs> like it just, I, I don't know. It's segues going back. Uh, Clark hears a high pitch ring. They're like, what are you, a dog? And then he basically bounces and traces the the ring back to his dad's toolbox, gets the key, goes to the caves, puts it in, gets shot with um, an energy beam that really reminded me of Donnie Darko. Oh, yeah. And also, uh, season one of The Flash, the episode right before uh, the crossover. You'll have to jog my memory. I don't remember. Uh, The guy who stole Barry's powers. Oh, that guy, yeah. Or not stole powers, his powers, who robbed him of his powers. He was like a pseudo-parasite. Yeah, it's like a weird, like, wavy, like, worm-like that effect didn't look bad. And when he's held up in the air, that didn't look bad. It was just that dream flying that looked absolutely horrible. But basically... Well, the- is it this season or three or four where he's... It had to have been last season where he's in bed and he's dreaming and he's hovering. Oh, I think that's the pilot. It's like one of the first episodes of the show. Which again is like one of the things that they will joke about in this show till the last, ep- the very last scene in the last episode, because Clark never flies. As Clark, he does fly when he's like Kryptonian, Kal-el controlled Clark. Yeah, because in the uh, Legion episode, uh, I forgot. Uh, I want to say it's Lightning Lad. specifically says when he gives Clark the Legion ring. No fights. Oh yeah, well that's the whole thing about the show is yeah, never no was fights, like... no fights. Even yeah. though by that by this point or by that point in the show the original showrunners had already left and Yeah, and they did kind of pull back on that because Cyborg and well Green Arrow is kind of in an outfit. But this was also like that kind of time around X Men when like no one ever thought you could actually put people in realistic looking costumes. Yeah, they all had to be leather. Exactly. There's still kind of deal with that at times in the CW shows. Um, yeah. But basically, Clark wakes up and Lex is standing over him, and the doctor, <sighs> Doctor Glasses, and they're like, "What the hell are you doing here? Why are you passed out?" The doctor's like, how do you keep getting past the guards? And Clark is like, I think I'm just going to like go home. And they just let him go. And the mm-hmm. doctor's like, why do you keep dealing with this kid to Lex? Which I think is like the only character to ever actually confront Lex on who's like a 24-year-old. Why are you hanging out with this 16-year-old? Yeah. Uh, also, shit's legal, man. Uh, you can hang out with it. It's just super creepy. Yeah, or that's what I meant to say. Shit's creepy. Shit's creepy, yeah. bro. It's illegal you... for an adult to hang out with a sixteen-year-old. Um, I don't that, think it's that, a... that actually sounds like something Hunter would say. I don't know if it is in Kansas. <laughs> it's legal where Hunter is. 
Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw him put that on, uh, like, sh- do his meme posts. Oh, yeah. In a secret group. <laughs> um, This is where we get our random drama between the love triangle. So Lana's computer keeps crashing, so she has to use Chloe's in the newspaper thing and randomly clicks on a folder called CK, which is very obviously Clark Kent. Yes. I was waiting for a Louis C.K. Fuck. joke in there. <laughs> no, leaving, because that guy can go to I think I can get fucked by a goat. Probably care. He sir I mean he probably already has. <laughs> no, he's probably done done the other way. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that one's that part's illegal. I don't know it's illegal if the goat has sex with you. If you get raped by a goat, is that illegal? I think that's more of a I gotta I gotta find a way to keep this up. Make sure no one finds Although, out. It does remind me of another crazy person. Uh the guy that made the McAfee stuff. John McAfee. Basically he, he's insane and he lives in some island. Oh, okay. but <laughs> I think I know where this is going. Um, but he basically made a comment that like whales are gigantic creatures and they're like some of the greatest killing machines. And like one slap of their tail can take down a boat. So if you're able to have sex with a whale, like that shouldn't be a crime because basically if you're actually able to do it, like the whale was <laughs> consenting. And sure, I I guess they're smart. Yeah. Uh, but to get back to the actual show. So Lana looks at the pictures and Chloe catches her and she's totally uh, hypocritical and be like, how dare you invade my privacy? And tells kind of Lana that the only name, like after she poured her heart out, uh, of course, Clark said Lana's name. Yeah. Which I, I just got so annoyed at this because in, you haven't uh, watched him in a long time, but in like three episodes, all Chloe does is like dive into Clark's past when he keeps telling her stop. And it's literally he, he called his says, Yo, stay away. Any of your business. And she, but- yeah, and she's she's like, nah, I'm gonna, yeah, her, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do a deep dive, then just find out everything. I'm gonna swim. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna swimming. Post your information you so on an adoption website and find a crazy lady who's gonna end up kidnapping Lex Luthor because she thinks that Clark is her uh, son that she had with Lionel, and then tries to kill Lex with an axe. Like there's an entire episodes that are because Chloe keeps messing into Clark's past. Before it was before Damn it Barry, it was Damn it Chloe. Oh yes. Damn it Barry. Oh right, right, right. All right. Ugh. Um so from here we go to the farm. Clark is helping Jonathan and he's like, Oh, now I'm not having any more bad dreams. Jonathan goes to leave with Martha and they have a conversation about like when they're gonna tell people about the pregnancy, and then as they're leaving, Clark just... Oh, wait, stop. I just want to stop you there. Because we forgot to mention something that's sort of critical to this episode. Or what what, what happens next. When... Uh. Before Clark leaves the, ta- the uh, torch... The, the newspaper? The, the, yeah, the news... He or when or when him, Lana and Chloe are there. He get he hears an intense sound that sounds like metal scre- or screeching metal that is being scraped. Oh yeah, I, I talked about like that's how he goes and finds the uh, the key. The think, his dad hit it right. Yeah, and then he gets shot with the Darny Darko looking thing in the chest when he goes and puts it in the caves. Mm. Uh, sorry, yeah. I just wasn't listening. I'm That's trying to okay. I'm trying to watch Star Trek in the background. It's what? all right. The new one, the newer one. Season two starts soon. Oh, are you watching the short treks on C- C- CBS All Access? I tried watching the one with uh, Rain Wilson, but I wanted to shoot myself. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure all of them are bad. I do not have that CBS thing, but oh, that I- show is actually really good. I just the only ones I want to see are Calypso, uh, Brighter Star or Brighter something, the one the Saru one, and the one 
with Tilly because yeah. she's pretty much my favorite character. Oh, she's hilarious. Especially when she has to play evil Tilly. Yeah, Mon, I I just No, this can wait. Well, I'm about to. I'm, I was going to say something, but that can wait till after. Yeah. After this, that, you can save that for our Star Trek podcast that we'll probably be doing in a couple months. <laughs> uh, if so, oh uh, no, that could wait also. All right. Um, so Thing soon. Yes. Um, Clark laser visions the barn. It catches fire. Him and Jonathan start putting it out. I. This is one of my favorite uh, scenes in this. But Martha turns and looks and gives like the oh god damn it look because Chloe's pulling up in her Volkswagen Beetle. Yeah. And she's just like, ah oh, shit. And she's just like a total like Oh, Chloe? Yeah, she's like, like immediately like just takes out a camera and takes a picture of it. It's like, yeah. No, no, I mean look. I'm talking about the way she acts. I'm not trying to be Chloe uh, or Martha. Chloe, like she's just very pissed off this the entire episode. Oh she's yeah, like, she, you know. Well, she's pissed that like somebody you know dug into her stuff and doesn't know how to like take her own medicine. No, no, she's I mean the incel of this episode. Oh god. <laughs> um, but basically, Clark turn after like Chloe leaves. Clark turns and tells his parents that's a symbol that means hope. And they're like, how do you know that? And he's like, I put the key in the wall and downloaded the language into me. And Jonathan's like, wait, what? And he's like, yeah, Dr. Like Lex and Dr. Glasses found me. But I think that the disc ev- like evaporated. So it's all cool. And Jonathan's like, you're an idiot. Yeah. You don't know for sure. Like, yeah, he legit was like, you don't like, yeah. How do you, do you know? And he's like, I think. And just kind of like not shakes his head at him. And we that specific st- statement i think or this happened because of this had this happened i think it happened this is going to come around at the end of the episode <clears throat> oh yes um so clark is at the talon he's filling out his family tree uh lana comes and starts talking to him and then he basically tells her sort of what's going on he's like my parents are freaking out because I'm looking into like my birth parents and like where I'm from and it's bugging them out. And Lana's like, well, you got to do what you got to do. Like you shouldn't stop. Like if you want to know who you're, where you're from, it makes sense. And then she looks at his papers and is like, oh, where's all that? And he's like, oh, I was just doodling and like crumbles it up and throws it away, but misses the garbage and then like pieces out. And then Lex shows up and is like, okay. And then somehow magically looks at the paper on the ground and it's like oh shit those are the drawings and brings it to professor glasses yeah he summons professor glasses to the to the mansion via beeper oh my god yes i I, i'm still i'm still feeling the 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 terrible negative effects of those two episodes from my from earlier this week i'm I'm like trying to power through this early part of the episode because it's really like halfway point that i think this turns into from an okay episode into a great one because there's like no real fighting or anything. It's all like kind of character driven. But uh, Clark goes and visits Chloe and is basically like, um, thanks to you, like we've had to have the police come and like shoo away like alien people from our house. Thanks for that. And Chloe's like, oh, I'm sorry. And then he's like, well, I forgive you if you forgive Lana. And she's like, well, that's kind of different. And yeah, it's like no, you took photos and exploited like a thing at my house for your stupid high school newspaper, which apparently has like nationwide coverage. Yeah, That's the whole I, thing I, about I, high school newspapers in like small towns is that like they can just like destroy someone. Yeah, because like Lex reads it, and I guess maybe at this point I understand why Lex reads it, but like, how do like alien people get a hold of it? I mean, you know. To read it on the interwebs. I know. Um. Oh, but I basically, know if that's like part of the episode. I don't, I don't remember specifically. Uh, like, the oh, there's people coming to my house. Yeah, the internet is definitely part of this as well because they used to do like a web show too for this, like exactly like what you're talking about with Star Trek. Yeah, the Chloe Chronicles. 
I think you can find them online. But while she's sitting there, she's getting emails from uh, Avi Swan, and they're all for Clark. And it says um, it's the symbol that it was burned into the thing. It and means it hope. hope. And then it says, I have something for you. And then we get the awesome scene of Pete bringing his laptop with some magic wireless dial-up thing. Yeah. We, yeah. It, you it totally hear the dial-up. Yeah, which I was like, you can't do that with dial-up. Either you're wireless and hooking up to, like, at that time, a satellite, because Wi-Fi didn't exist. Yeah. Or... So <laughs> I don't even this know. It's like a really primitive like VPN, I guess. Yeah. Or or hear me out. Pete went into the future, broke the temporal space and or the temporal uh prime directive and just changed everything. <laughs> so now I have wireless uh, dial. He brought he brought wireless <laughs> well, he brought Wi-Fi technology back into the early 2000s. Yeah, it was just such like a weird scene because it's like a three, it's like a one minute scene. He's just like, man, what's all the cloak and dagger stuff? It's like, well, if I did this other thing, Chloe would be over my shoulder. And then he like, I he gets an IM from Doctor Swan saying, I'm a I'm a friend. Yeah, and then like Clark is kind of like, hurry up, like, what do you mean <laughs> hurry up? <laughs> it's like I'm using technology that doesn't exist. Uh, it's like I'm the only person in the United States that that's not part of like some secret government thing that has wireless dial up. He got it from the same place he got those dirt bikes, Alan. <laughs> Which you haven't been here, but there's some like two episodes where randomly Clark and Pete just have dirt bikes that are and never like, explained. On them. Yeah, and they're like never explained why they have them or where they came from. And so, they just and then uh, in the later episode, Pete was r- driving around in a uh what was what what car type of car was it? Oh, he had like a Corvette or something. He had like a sports car. Yeah. Like out of we nowhere. Were, we we were surmising that he sold the dirt bikes to get the car, but then the dirt bike came back. It's yeah, it, it's really like they just randomly get. I guess Pete's family's rich because his, his mom's mom a judge. Is, yeah, his mom's judge. They don't say what maybe they buy them from like police compound. You don't like, really meet the <laughs> Pete's parents that often. He, we see his dad. I think we see his dad in the first episode, and we see his mom at some point, and that's like like next great. season. Yeah, and then they go away, and Pete goes away because they couldn't. Because to quote uh, an old web show, I used to I used to watch. Creative has nothing for you. <laughs> yeah, then he starts selling a uh, or buying kryptonite gum or whatever. Oh God, that's right. And he becomes an elongated man. Uh, terrible. So Dr. Glasses finds the key wedged in the wall of the cave, puts it in. He gets the same thing. Gets, he no, only no. gets hit, hit by like a second. Yeah, like a kind of different then, energy light. Yeah, yeah and then, he gets like he just blasted gets, quick. He gets blasted immediately just as if he got... Okay, so I've been watching a bunch of also, as well as Star Trek, I've been watching a bunch of Justice League. And I've been noticing that Certain characters are having like are like certain certain characters are more powerful than they should be, like uh Pat Duggan, uh Stargirl's uh father in law. Arnon Dugan? No no, 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 that's not, Marvel. Not, that's Marvel. Uh Stripe. I don't know. I don't. Rem- I remember those episodes in Unlimited, but I don't remember what happens. I think that's He's... like the cage fighting episode, right? No, no. I'm talking about the mech, the guy in the mech. Okay. But he and Wade I- Wade Eiling turned into a Hulk, quote unquote. They just do. They punch each other. And there's, they break every single window that's near. Oh. And 
they go f- like certain characters will get one character will, will get punched and go, go um like three three million miles away. It was as if Professor Glasses got hit at that impact by the laser, but instead of going through the Three miles, three three million miles away. He went he went at the same velocity. Where? He hit a wall. That's where he went. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He just he he totally eats shit. I guess passes like, out. And then I guess he's he, blind. Yeah, not, basically. Yeah, yeah he's he's pretty much brain. He's he's not he's brain fried. Yeah, the tonic yeah, he's, he's basically Clark finds the disc, brings him to the hospital. Um, Lex is like, uh, three things that are weird going in the caves by you. What's up? And Clark's like, I don't know. And then leaves. And Lex is basically like, he definitely knows something. I think well, we before come he back leaves, to... he like he's still in the hospital. Then like a courier oh, yeah. guy is like, yeah, hey, I'm a letter for like, you. Yeah, yeah, and Lex is like, like, aren't you gonna open it? And Lex like, probably that's probably spam. Mail. It's yeah. like, dude, this guy literally had to come find you. It's definitely not junk mail ever. Um, and then and then we get the 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 bland piece of dialogue. Or the mundane piece of dialogue. It's small town. Yeah. yeah. That and explains it. I believe we cut back in so he gets Clark gets the address for Dr. Swan, and then we cut back into the room for Dr. McGlasses. And Lex learns that his brain is tried because he got information overload and will likely never regain consciousness. Uh, again, this is the second time we're seeing this doctor. I think he actually has a name in this one, or he might still be Doctor, uh, who's actually the actor. He is in Riverdale right now, he's been in all three seasons. Clifford yeah. Blossom. Yeah, he plays Clifford Blossom in Riverdale. And Clifford Blossom's brother, who isn't is who may be a clone of Clifford Blossom, but who is just Clifford Blossom. Yeah, that's or he, that's or he, Riverdale podcasts. But yeah, that's the it's just like a reference, like bringing back up like that such a small character that was in like one scene several episodes ago, they brought back for the scene as like another doctor in this hospital. Which I guess has like a lot of work because shit seems to go down all the time in Smallville. Yeah. Well, also, like, is this hospital like a, a part of like multiple towns or like, because they always talk about like, oh, we have to go to Metropolis for this or this. Yeah. Like, Metropolis has like, is like the higher tech one, but then this is like the local hospital. But yeah, I guess it must be like a hospital for like Smallville and some surrounding towns. Yeah. I wonder I, what it would be like to be in the Smallville universe and here. And re- like just be on the internet looking, just seeing news reports from Kansas, and but being like another state. Oh, yeah. just like how much shit is going on there? Yeah, it's it. Instead of Florida man, it's like Kansas man. It's like Kansas <laughs> man's affected by some meteor rocks and is now able to like shoot electricity out of his fingers. I don't know. It would be interesting, but um. Now we are getting to the meaty part of this episode. So Clark goes to Chloe. They find out that Dr. Virgil Swan, and we see the Time Magazine cover, which is reveals that it is Christopher Reeves. And basically, Reeves. he was Tony Stark, and then just like disappeared and sold everything. Yeah. That's called, kind of... And he was called the Man of Tomorrow. Yeah. Reference to Superman. Which they brought back, or they end up using re- recycling uh, about eight seasons later in the Ultraman episode. Yep. Um, we get a quick scene of Chloe and Lana making up, and then Clark goes and talks to his parents about going to see Dr. Swan. This is one of the best. So there's like three amazing scenes in this episode. This is the first one. So it's Clark, Jonathan, and Martha talking about Clark needing to go see him, Dr. Swan. And basically they have this like talk that like talk and you see, especially in Martha's eyes that like how nervous she is because she thinks that she's going to lose her son. 
And this is where you get like Jonathan's like, I'm not ready to stop protecting you. And he's like, how about we all go together? Because it's his office is in New York. And Clark says, no, this is something I have to do on my own. And then we're just left with like Martha and Jonathan just like looking at each other. Like, are we about to like, lose our son? Yeah. And it's something that you would not see in this film. Like, uh, I don't know. Man of Steel. Yeah, like this. Like this scene and the, the scene later on with Jonathan is completely why I love this version of John Kent. It's kind of I like suppose. I was thinking that like the whole like both episodes, he's kind of the best part of the show. Oh, yeah. We always saw the three biggest the three best parts of the episodes are Jonathan, uh, John Schneider, Michael Rosenbaum and, and John Glover uh, and John Glover, who plays Lionel. Like anytime, oh. especially if you get two of them in a scene. They just have such good chemistry with each other. Like uh, Glover and Snyder are great going at each other, as well as like Rosenbaum and them. It's yeah, they are great. Good for this show. And he before this, he was like famous for being on Dukes of Hazard. And yeah, there's like, isn't there some later season episode where they like they kind of talk about that? Oh, they have the other guy from Dukes of Hazard. I don't remember which yep. one is which. Uh, Bo Duke and I don't remember the other no, one. No, no, Bo is John Schneider. Luke Duke is uh, Tom Wilpat. Right. I don't know why I know why they, who the other yes. guy's name is, but they yeah, do. I'm, yeah, I'm the oldest one here and I have no idea what any of that is. Um, and also when in, the, in that episode where they have a sort of Dukes has a reunion. They play the song from. Oh yeah, and they also do like the car stunts. Yeah, not to forget that Martha also played Lana Lang in Superman. Four. Three. Superman three. 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 Okay. And the the two the creators of the show didn't know that because. Suck. That's surprising because there's so many cameos of people. Again, this is like the first big big one. With Christopher Reeves, but which we should actually get to the part where we actually see Christopher Reeves. Well, so is... when they start talk, when even when he they they're talking about it when he's being talked about before he's even shown, we're getting hit with that John Williams Superman the movie. Mo- oh yeah, music. they they do it so well throughout the episode. They do it so well throughout the series. Yes, but in this episode specifically, so. He starts, he shows up, he's like, can't find him, and then you see Dr. Christopher Reeves comes out behind and he's like, oh, and we see him in his wheelchair because obviously Christopher Reeves got hurt when he was younger, like, falling off of a horse. And About, not, not even a decade prior, like six, seven years prior. Yeah. It was very recent. So he had, he at this point had the breathing tube and he was still able to talk. Which he lost not too like after the second time he appeared, not too long after that, he couldn't talk anymore. Um, but we see him here, he still looks really good. He's obviously a bigger guy, but he doesn't look too old and frail. And he starts yeah, he talking looks to like just kind of like a dad. Yeah. But he looks like super like he still looks like Christopher Reeves. And it actually made me think of there's this amazing I think it's a hot toys figure. Where they did like a, a like one of the newer 3D scans using old footage from the movies, so mm-hmm. it's like this Christopher Reeve Superman, and it is amazing looking. And just looking at that, it was like the last time I think I saw anything with his face, and like seeing him here, I was like, oh man, it's just like he is still kind of like the Superman I imagine. Pretty much is and always will be. But basically, he reveals that the message came 13 years ago, and Clark's like, oh, the same day as the meteor shower, and it's taking him forever to, to decrypt it, because he found a mathematical key hidden within the signal, and that he always wondered what happened to the kid, and then when he saw that the burn mark happened on the barn, he saw that the people who owned the farm adopted a little boy 13 years ago and put everything together, and it's basically like, I'm not going to reveal anything. Uh, to anybody, I just need to know for myself. And tells him, so he shows him the first thing, which is 
says, this is Kal-El of Krypton, our infant son, our last hope. Please protect him and deliver him from evil. We will be with you, Kal-El, for all the days of your life. And th- again, the music, the way they use the music in this episode is so f- perfect. Yeah, because like it's not there, and Clark's like, oh, I'm not going to tell you stuff, and starts to leave. And Christopher Reeves is like, if you leave that door, it closes forever. But if you stay, I will help you, and you will make a friend, basically. And then, like, as Clark stops and turns around, the music kind of swoons up to that, like, amazing John Williams score. The Superman theme. Bum, and then bum, he... Bum, re- bum. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then he reveals the second part, which is on this third planet from the star... Uh... Sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, that's the part from the ship. I'm trying to. I don't see the second one. Oh my god, I don't have the second one. I have the one from the ship. I even think like he talks about the second one during that conversation, right? Yeah, I can't remember. I'm trying to see if I can find the. There's only there's only two messages. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I can't find it. But basically, the other thing Doctor Swan reveals is that he tracked back the message. And that it came where it came from, Krypton is no longer there. And basically tells Clark, you know, you're probably the only Krypton left, Kryptonian left, and then calls him Kal El before like that scene is over. Yes. And that's like really all we need. It was like, it was really, really good. Yeah. Which I'm sure is like, it's also one of the few kind of times that, although Christopher is kind of out and about, but he obviously couldn't really act anymore. But like that little bit was just so amazing. Like he still had great charisma and poise from like even though he was like paraplegic. Like you when he said like if you walk out the door, it closes forever, you're like, oh shit, this guy. Because he basically is supposed to be like a Tony Stark as character, because he's like he graduated from MIT. He's like a billionaire, like tech genius. He has more satellites in space than like some countries and like all this stuff and it's like something happened and he like doesn't even call anybody i think chloe says something like no one's had no one has heard of him in five years and this guy's emailing you if it's a hoax he's not he doesn't think so or something like that yeah it's just such a great scene like again i said there are three i thought there were three amazing scenes this is obviously the second one to me and i think um tom milling does a pretty good job hanging with christopher reeves in this or he's just like trying to hold back and like be reserved because he doesn't want to give anything away. But like the knowledge that he is getting is just like so devastating to him. And then Christopher Reeves is just like this not stoic feeling. Yeah, but it's this stoic. He just wants to know that he was right. And that like the humans are not allowed alone in the universe. Yeah, it's certainly it is like totally a turning point for Tom Welling because like there's that there's that weird moment where um, either in this episode or the last one where like everybody's asking him about his mom and he's like, what is this an interview? And it's still like a little like over the top and kind of corny. Yes. Yeah. I think I was in the last one. Yeah. And he like loses his shit on Chloe. Not even like really. It's just, it was just kind of like, come on guys. Like, well, I think this thing, like I think Tom Welling is a good actor, but he kind of rises and falls to those who are around him. Because again, when he's in uh, scenes with Rosenbaum, with Schneider, which is like the next one, uh, or with I can't I always forget the actress who plays Martha. Danette O'Toole. Yes. Uh, with her, with he's with um John Glover, like they are like they kind of bring his game up. But then when he's with like the other actors, he kind of settles into like what you think of the CW show or Warner Brothers show of this time. Proto Riverdale, basically. Yes. Um. So to get so this final part is basically we cut to Jonathan going into the storm cellar and Clark is just looking at the ship, thinking about it, and Clark basically says like I always wondered if you know there was anyone else like me out there and now I know for sure that there isn't. And I'm all alone. Mm-hmm. Um. See if I can find the actual lines because the lines are. Really good. That's some that's some good stuff. 
of course they're not here. Um, but basically he says like <laughs> I have to because <laughs> they usually have like the quotes on here. But um, basically is like I'm alone. He's like you're never alone. Like we're here with you. And then like shows him like this item that Jonathan had showed him like earlier that had fallen out of the ship, and tells him like I know what this is. It's the heart. Um, but I didn't want to do it alone. And Jonathan's like, let's do it together. And they put the key in and they put the heart in. And then a message swirls across the bottom. And that message says, on this third planet from the star soul, you will be a god among men. There are a flawed race. Rule them with strength, my son. That is where your greatness lies. And this basically like kind of crushes Clark. And it crushes and horrifies him. Yeah, like yeah. he's not sure really what to think. Yeah, because he's also like, "Am I? Is that my what they want for me? Is that who my people were? Like, am I sent here?" He actually, which is kind of funny. Like the media thing, I thought I was like, his kind of thought is that he thinks that he's kind of like the, the Dragon Ball Z origins of Goku that his people <laughs> sent him there to take over the planet. Which, like, I, I guess, like from that statement, which is like kind of a shitty thing to write. Um, well. It's been suggested that the message in the ship could have been intended as lead them with strength. Like, he's still, like, asking them to be led by, like, a baby, you know? Yeah, I guess the idea is that, like, he will be a god there, so there's no way he won't do anything but lead. I guess. Instead, he's like, eh, let me just, like, save everybody (laughs) all the time. Yeah, but I think this is also, like, where the scene kind of turns... Well, it's already good, but then, like, Jonathan kind of takes over the scene and is just like, you know, just like Swan had said, like, it doesn't matter. Like, you get to write your own destiny. We didn't raise you that way. That's not who you are. You get to be whoever you are. And they do this, like, they play with lighting really good in the shot, too, because Jonathan is behind Clark, and there's, like, kind of, like, the ship gets bright, and it gets bright on Clark, and then after he learns, they kind of switch stances, and Jonathan Mm -hmm. is between Clark and the ship. So Clark is kind of in the dark and Jonathan is in the light, like the light shining on his face and they hug it out. And as they're hugging, like Clark's like kind of freaked out. And then they cut around to Jonathan with his face, like in the light. And then his eye kind of like, he kind of looks up and is kind of like, not sure. Like he's giving Clark everything he can. He's comforting him, but there's like an unsureness in his face. Like I definitely got that. Because like, when like somebody is like hugging somebody else, like generally like you're gonna like close your eyes and like both of them like have their eyes open like pretty wide, but for two kind of different reasons. Like Clark, yeah, is, Clark like, is just like, I don't even know what to do. Like uh, he's just like so kind of broken by this information. Like his reality is completely broken. And Jonathan <laughs> is kind of like it's not what he they fear, like he's not gonna go off or whatever, but it's like one of those fears of like kind of like aliens in general is that they're just here. They're so much more advanced and knowing Clark's abilities, like, and not knowing like, cause he definitely got something happened in the cave. Like we don't know what that did to him. Yeah. Well, even just like, you know, this will happen probably like later in the season, but just like red kryptonite in general is just like, well, if like he can do that and he's like not under his own, He's not oh, using yeah. his mind. Like. Yeah, we saw Red Kryptonite twice in this season. But yeah, exactly. Like when he's not under control of his faculties, like he could destroy the world. Like at at the at any whim. Yeah. And even like hopefully they believe that they raise their son, but it's still like I don't want to raise somebody who eventually just like kills people just because. Yeah, it is. I don't know. This is one of the. If you cut out kind of the first like fifteen minutes, fifteen to twenty minutes, this is an episode I would show to anybody that would have like any kind of, like, want to know why this show is so beloved. Yeah. No, totally. Because yeah, these last like I would say like the last like four or five scenes of this episode are just so great. Like the lead up. So like when he's talking to his parents about going to visit the doctor, visiting Reeves, and then that those last like three big scenes are just so good and so powerful. And there's a lot of like not talking acting that's just so well done, just like faces and body language between like 
again, Martha, Jonathan, and I think that Welling does such a great job of like in those three of like being the kind of the defiant and wanting to be independent teenager to kind of being like the inquisitive, but kind of like trying to protect himself when he's talking to Reeves. And then the kind of like lost child that he ends up being at the end. Like he does a great job playing all those kind of different ways in this episode. It was certainly like just like a big moment of growth for him and throughout the entire episode. Oh yeah. This is definitely like a huge turning point in the character. And I think in the show is like having Christopher Reeves on is such like a legacy, like thumbs up. And yeah. I think it gives them more of a chance to kind of like step away. I, they obviously still do some goofy shit down the road, but like shows that they can kind of do these big moments. Like in the series that really do feel impactful. We were not feel like yeah. gonna, we're not going to be impacted by you know, the meteor freaks. Mm-hmm. Cause it's as weird as like, maybe it's not weird, but like, I actually think Onet, uh, uh, Annette O'Toole in the scene where it's the three of them, she says the least. And I actually think she does the most because her, she's just like reactions and just like a mother, just like afraid of losing her child and just like oh, yeah. seeking. Cause Clark even says like, back me up on this mom. And she's like, uh, no, and it ties yeah. into what why she hid the key in the last episode. Like she's just like I'm this sure. is her kid. Uh, yeah, like I, I don't know. This is a great episode. Um I guess the last little thing before we kind of close out here. This is apparently the third of five appearances that Evangeline Lily makes in the series. Yeah, oh, nice. she's a uh as an extra. <laughs> She's an extra who does not say a single thing. Yeah, she's in five episodes with no speaking lines. You know. So that money. Yep. Yeah, it's just funny to think of like she went from that and now she is the wasp. Well, she went from that to oh, yeah. uh reviews on the run slash judgment day on G4 and whatever channels in Canada. Yeah, I know she, yeah, her big thing was lost. Yeah, she's a uh, Kate. Yeah, but um, I don't know. Like, I, is there anything else to really say? Like, honestly, this kind of felt like uh, the end of a season or something. Like, I feel like this would be like a good just like end of a season arc. I know, and it's, we have six more episodes left in the season, but like, I totally agree with you. Like, this would have been a great season finale or mid-season finale episode. Um, well, the... Actually, it is kind of a break. So this came out in February 25th. The next episode didn't come out until April. Oh, this... So, this, so this was kind of a break episode where they were off, like, I don't even know what they call those, like, quarter season they still do this now where they take like a month off randomly the the most criminal use of it was flash season two yeah when they would just air one they would air two episodes oh say, yeah oh the next are coming like three 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 to four months from now yeah they, no. they are better about that now but it's the problem with airing like doing these 20 something episode seasons so you have like your fall, you take your like kind of eight, nine break. episodes. Yeah. Then you take your winter break, which is like a month and a half. Then you come back for like three weeks and then you leave again for like another month because you have to finish out your season right before the summer. Like, it's like the they're most... just working year round pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Which if you listen to any of the people say is why they don't like working on these shows, especially these CW ones because they're in Vancouver for like nine months out of the year. Not like I'm pretty sure like, um, you know, supernatural guys, it's like pretty much their lives since it's like the longest running TV show. Oh yeah. Like if you listen, Rosenbaum has a podcast and he's had Welling on, he's had, I mean, what's, um, Stephen Amell, Stephen Amell. And then he had the, what's his name? That's on. This is us. That was green arrow. Justin Harley. Justin Harley and like just talking about like because Harley did like 
almost the same amount of time as Rosenbaum, and he was like, oh, yeah, it was brutal. Well, he he did season, I think, six, five or six was when he first started as, like, recurring. And then he was, like, main cast, right? He eventually became mid cast. And I think season eight. Yeah, but he was there from like for like half the series. Yeah. And Rosenbaum was there for like what eight seasons or seven seasons? Seven. Yeah. So like it was only a little bit less. Which is what you brought up because he talked about that with uh Stephen Amell for about Arrow season seven. Mm-hmm. Because he, he brought up he brought up the he brought up Smallville. And com- did a comparison. All right. Well, to quickly talk about our next two episodes are Visitor, in which there's a kid that claims to be an alien in the school. Oh, that's this is what that's one of the saddest episodes. And it then really, the, really, really messed up. Yeah, the one after that is Precipice, where Lana gets assaulted by a college student and Lex fights Hel- doctor, his doctor girlfriend's ex-boyfriend. So, and we only have three more episodes left of season two for our show. Um, I guess we can do some quick plugs. Do you have anything you would like to plug, Cam? Uh, yeah, actually. I just did an interview with Josiah Hughes, who you two may not know about, but he is a, a writer for Canadian music publication Exclaim. And he's actually an all around great guy. And yeah, go check out um, One Note Interviews, where I, I, I talked to him for about an hour and a half about his career. And he does this podcast where him and Sam Sutherland of This Exists review one Blink 182 song a week. And it's actually really funny. So that's interesting. Yeah. Check that out. Especially because of like how different those three guys became as a, like older adults. Oh, yeah. And how uh, Tom is just like insane now. Oh, yeah. He's a crazy alien guy, right? Yes. Go check out his Joe Rogan interview. And just... I was going to bring up. He's a maniac. <laughs> um, that's awesome. What, uh, where can people find that? What's the website? You, you can find it on Spotify, on most podcast platforms, except for iTunes and Overcast and a few others. Oh, is that the, his podcast or your interview? It's my podcast. Okay. One no interview. All right. Um, me and Al do this show, obviously. We also have a new show that's part of the Los Haro podcast, I don't know, symposium network. Conglomerate. Conglomerate. Uh, where we talk with Emporium. Gary, Emporium. Uh, where we talk with Gary Gilmore about cartoons we're watching. We're two episodes in. That comes out every other Thursday. Uh, every. Please do not. Uh, normally, I'd say I'd pr- I'd promote episodes, but the episode that recently went up. Oh yeah, is just don't. <laughs> please don't. No good. Uh, no, it's it's so Clark's, we, Clark's the animated series. Yeah, it was a our it second is horribly recording. offensive. Yeah, we went into it being like, oh, this is awesome. We really like our Kevin Smith fans, and it is something that is so dated and not funny. Which is sad because it actually has like some really great writers behind it besides Kevin Smith. Um, yeah, Kevin Smith, uh, Paul Dini wrote an episode. Kevin Smith or Paul Dini wrote an episode with Kevin Smith, and he actually did a voice on this on the show as uh, George Lucas. Yes, it was a show. I think it lasted two episodes on CBS. You can check that out. It is no, no, called ABC. ABC Legion of Tune uh, on all your podcasting things. And that is part of Los Haro, where you can also find Los Haro Games, which Alan is part of. Yes. Uh, The show is, I don't even know how to describe it. It's sort of, I don't want to say it's Beatlemania. Beatlemania. It is doing doing very, very well for you guys. But yeah, it's basically. I I mean, I'm sort of a stat freak now because of Teo. Teo, thank you, Teo. Because because he would bring up like, hey, this we did this. These were our stats this month, 
And now on my I I only look the only reason I have the WordPress app on my phone is to look at the stats for this for for losar.wordpress.com. We can find tons of different podcasts that we are all part of. Yeah, you guys have Los Haro Games. There's the Los Haro Podcast, Legion of Tune. At the uh, Untitled Queer Podcast, which is the continuation of the second most popular Los Haro podcast. Uh, Flack. Flack. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely interesting. Um, and I cannot wait for you guys to re-release that. I will be a subscriber. <laughs> no, no. It, it was, our, I think... What Cam? Uh, how did you title the, the relaunch, uh, rebirth? Uh, we I I realized like halfway through the day because we were supposed to have the relaunch. It was like, oh yeah, I should have that up. So I, it is up. Our first two episodes are up. Go yeah. subscribe. Okay, I will go and subscribe to that. What is it called on iTunes and everything? The Untitled Queer Podcast. All right. Or you can actually uh, search. On on losharo.wordpress.com. There we go. Yeah, oh, yeah. everyone, go check out losharo.wordpress.com, the biggest mouthful that we will keep repeating. Yes, there are tons of podcasts and great articles. One of the other ones is Monster Mash, and you can also listen to all the other Phantom Zone podcasts that are in this stream, as well as um, we every Thursday, uh, me and Alan do a comic book show. Well, I don't normally uh, promote. Uh, the main Los Haro podcast because I'm, the last time I was on it was for the episodes that I was basically just moderator. No, I was basically I was basically a background guy who I was sort of like the guy just in there just making sure everything would would record. But they just yeah. the most recent episode is out and it's on the BBC series Luther starring Idris Elba. Wonderful show. And there's going to be a movie, so I'm uh, hyped. I, I'm a, a procedural junkie, and that is one that has been on my list for a while. It's, and and wh- it also has a Doctor Who. There's a Doctor Who connection. Oh, I'm sure. Paul uh, McGann. For all you Doctor Who fans, not named Lewis. Yes. All you Whovians. I think that's what they call themselves, right? Yeah, Whovians. Themselves but, fucking uh, dorks. <laughs> hey, I'm a Hoovian. What? Whatever. You're on a podcast about Smallville. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a small. I'm not a Smallvilleite. <laughs> Smallvillian. Smallvillian, maybe. There we go. Okay. I'll res- I can respect that. But um, I think that kind of wraps us up. You can check out again all those podcasts. Subscribe, rate, review, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher. Oh, there's. I I, for- I totally forgot. Until now, until you started blasting all those po- these podcast platforms, uh, so I've subscribed to the Lost Horror Games YouTube channel. You should all do, by the way, because I just yesterday the pilot went up for sort of a mix of. NLP, an episodic LP series that I'm doing with Star Trek Online. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool. Where with most or all the or yeah, most of the Star Trek shows that the names follow the ships. Yep. Oh, uh, are okay. you going to have a face cam? Oh, no. <laughs> no. All right. Well, I think we I, can... I just wanted. I it, well, the <laughs> name it, it's called Star Trek Evolution. Mm. I'm hyped. First, like like I said, first episode went up. Uh, episode one, secrets, and right. I'm sort of debating whether or not to put put it up as it was captured in edited <laughs> episodes. Totally work. Yeah. I have to talk to my guy about that. <laughs> I got a guy for editing. Awesome. All right. All right. Well, this has been a blast, guys. 
Yes, this has been the longest Smallville episode. I think it was longer <laughs> than both of the episodes if you watch them combined. Um, yeah. All right. Um, all right. Catch you guys next time. I'm Luke Gonzalez. Thank you for joining us once again, Cam. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's a blast. I'm Alan Mir, and this podcast stands for truth, justice, and everything.